So the intention of this series of videos is just to get you familiar with some of the staple sounds that we found in techno music over the last 20 years or so. Like I say, there's no particular technique or particular sound that you must sort of adhere to in techno music. It, it is about experimenting with sounds. So we're starting with the first one here. This is this is a dub chord sound. And um, we've looked at this on previous pages. This is a style of techno music that was born in Germany in the in the early 90s and is sort of purveyors of that would be artists like Basic Channel. Um, so without any further ado, let's have a look at the sound and what we'll do is we'll rebuild the sound back up from scratch and talk about some of the techniques being used. Cool, so what I've got is just a little pre-made loop here, just some typically kind of dub techno sound and drums. Not too harsh, not too distorted, just quite nice and low end and warm. You can hear there's a bit of texture and a bit of atmosphere with that with the, the sort of noise, the crackled sound. And for the sound itself, we can see that it's quite simple really, it's just a, a combination of a synthesizer, a couple of effects, and there's some send effects here also. Let's just explore this a little bit and what we'll do is we'll re rebuild it from scratch just so we have a better understanding. So we can see the main part of it really is that there's three oscillators which are purposefully detuned from each other in intervals that make up basically a minor chord. So zero semitones, three semitones and seven make up a minor chord. All of these three oscillators are then fed into a filter. The particular filter type chosen here is called a bandpass filter. This is just a sort of narrow band filter which trims the very high frequencies and the very low frequencies and just kind of allows us to work within a narrower range. If I just turn that off, not too dissimilar but it's a lot more full Whereas with the filter on, the sound just works within the narrower range. Again, this is down to taste really, it doesn't, it, there's no absolutes here. And then from here as well, the amp envelope, which is just the, basically the volume over time, is just set to a quick attack and a short decay and no sustain. So we get this kind of percussive, we can exaggerate that by lowering the decay. And these are all parameters in which we can change over time and make the sound in the, the track more interesting. So let's actually get into this and rebuild it from scratch so we understand each step. I'm just going to borrow that MIDI from there. And let's go from the start. Okay, so there will be the ES2 I'm using here. The reason being because it has these nice three oscillators. And I'm just going to set up that detune that I spoke about, or those intervals, and I'm just going to sort of slightly drift them away from each other with the, the scent tune, which is just a fine tune. So they're not all sort of perfectly uh, on one particular note. So that'll give us the, that's given us the minor chord. I can combine that as well. If I just turn up this analog, that'll give it a, a, a less stable, less digital sense. And the, the pitch will actually just sort of slightly vary, uh, which will just give us a sort of more uh, analog sound, I suppose. It's it's pretty self-explanatory. Let's just blend this filter over here and select bandpass and bring the filter cut off down. A bit of drive will give us a bit more volume. Now, what we want to happen is every time that filter plays, we just want it to slightly vary each time. So we can do that by attaching the filter cutoff or the LFO to the filter cutoff. We'll just use LFO one in this case. Now we don't want that quick kind of fluttering sound. We just want a slow rate. So we're just getting kind of slow movement each time. Uh, when it hits here, you can see it's just slightly moving slow. Okay. Not bad, let's just jump back in and see what I've done on the previous sound. Okay, you can see I've also applied, uh, actually let's do the envelope shape, I forgot to do that. Something like this. 
Nice. Brilliant. Okay, so I've already set this up, but I'm just going to bust these sounds, this channel, sorry, to two effects, one of which is a tape delay. What differentiates it from a kind of standard delay is that every time you hear the repeat, can you hear there? We get this sort of just slightly analog feel to it by, by which the, the tape is playing back at a sort of varied speed. So we don't get an exactly perfect repeat each time we get this nice sort of analog tape sound which is cool and I'm also going to go to another effect this one's crucial this is a reverb but what you particularly see about the reverb is that the decay time is very long I'll just play it with a shorter decay the reverb stops quite quick let's turn that delay off yeah we see we just got a short blip what we usually want in this type of sound is a very long decay. Let's say, let's say like 12 seconds, very long indeed. So look, majority of the sound is not actually the sound itself, but the, the sound of the, the room, the reverb being triggered. Uh, let's add that with the delay as well. And we're pretty much there really from here. In the track, what you'd hear is just slight variations on the sound. So that could be the filter cutoff moving. There's all kinds of things you can do to uh, put your own stamp on this. Let's have a look. Ah, one, one crucial thing I forgot as well is often what you'll hear as well is, again, just in line with just slight changes, is a phaser. So each time it hits, if, if basically what a phaser will do is change the, the tone of it, almost like the EQ shape you could imagine is, is constantly changing. Yeah, imagine we just took an EQ shape like this and we had uh, this moving around. That's essentially what a phaser will do. So if we combine this again with the rest of it, that's a little bit over the top, so I'm just going to bring the amount down. Nice, and that's pretty much it, really.